Hey everyone, this is Faith of Raven Repair Co, and I'm going to talk about setting up a gaming virtual machine. Now why would you do this, one might ask. You could just boot into Windows, or just have a separate computer. Uh, so, I use Linux for all of my workflow. Everything I do is based around Linux. Uh, like, I do my website development on Linux, I keep all my files on Linux, like, I browse the web on Linux, etc, etc. I'm used to building open source, uh, like, I'm Used to, I'm so used to like compiling on Linux that it's like just second nature to me at this point. And I don't want to have to interrupt my workflow to boot into Windows because I happen to be in the mood for a couple games of like Destiny 2. I've been really into Destiny 2, but you can't run it on Linux through any means because of the fact that there is anti-cheat, and that has been one of Wine's biggest faults for the longest time, and it's not an issue of Wine, it's nothing with their team. They're doing an impressive job with how they've made all these, like, compatibility layers. It's the anti-cheat developers who don't realize that people are going to be playing games on other operating systems. And so unfortunately for edge cases like this, we have two options. We dual boot, or just single boot Windows, which I'm not personally ever going to do ever again. Or you make a virtual machine. Now, using a virtual machine takes a lot of horsepower, but it is worth it if you have the right parts and you have about an hour or so of time free. So, let's get started with it. So this is going to be for Arch-based distributions. I'm using Antergos currently. Yes, I will fully admit that I'm not using standard Arch because I don't have that kind of time in my life. Uh, and you're going to want to install some basic packages. So these packages are going to be as follows. QMU, OVMF, Vert Manager, EV Tables, and DNS Mask. So I already have these installed, so I'm not going to install them, but you'll want to just install every single one of those things you see there. And now, after you do that, you're going to want to find something called an LSPCI ID. Now how you do this, uh, for this specific process is you type lspci dash nnk and you'll see right at the bottom here a bunch of entries for NVIDIA I already have them written down in my uh, mouse pad here but 10DE0E0F referring to my audio device and 10DE1287 referring to my video device so you're going to want to write those down, and while you're here, you're actually just might as well put the full command here. So in front of that, put vfio-pci.ids, and have that just at the ready to copy and paste. And the hard part is almost over, I promise. The next thing you're going to want to do with all this information is to edit your uh, bootloader. So. Uh, how you do that, I'm using systemd, uh, look up how to do it on grub if you're doing it on grub and don't know how, it's really simple. I just use systemd because grub just kept breaking my install recently, so I just fully switched over and I'm enjoying it a lot actually. So I want to just edit, uh, you want to edit your bootloader and you're going to want to go to the options field here and just go all the way to the end of that. And there are two things you want to put here. You want to put Intel-IOMMU equals on. If you're on an AMD processor, this is going to be different. But for us Intel users, that's what you put there. I think what you do on in, uh, AMD is you type IOMMU dash equals PT or something like that. But I'm told, I could be wrong. I haven't used an AMD processor since like 2004. And then again, you see that uh, VFIO PCID thing we were talking about? You want to put that in there. And then that's all set. And uh, there's one more step here. This last step, and you can breathe a sigh of relief because we're almost through the whole text based part, is editing your QMU configuration file so that it has the proper NVRAM. So the way you do that is you know, nano so you flip vert qmu.conf. I was wrong about that, it's libvert, not libvert d. I'm too used to the daemon. Uh, so, there is a field down here. Location of master NVRAM file. 
you're going to want to copy this exact command and I will put it in the description so you don't have to like sit here and stare and type at it and what this does is uses OVMF as your uh, UEFI manager instead of going through a traditional BIOS system which makes uh, cards like modern day card support EFI a lot better and kind of blend right into it so that way uh, the card has easier access to the virtual machine and vice versa all right now you're done the hard part so reward yourself by making sure you save this crack open a beer a Pepsi a glass of water hydrate whatever you want to do and you're going to want to reboot after this and after you've rebooted now you can get into the fun part so remember the virtual machine manager we were talking about earlier you're going to want to open that I have a shortcut on my desktop I'm just going to close all these while we're here uh, you'll have this policy kit thing it's okay I'll write a thing in the description of how to bypass that from any point onwards so you don't have to type in your password every time you want to access your VM uh, hold on let me delete this uh, this is from an earlier test uh, so you're gonna want to make a new virtual machine so to do this uh, you're going to want to uh, import I'm, I already have a disk so I'm going to import existing media so I'm just going to import lane station otherwise it's a very similar process except you'll have to have a Windows 10 installation and you have to actually sit through the whole installation it's basically the same thing you'll be providing an ISO choose the operating system and then get like the same field after that besides uh, well you get a, a, a prompt to put your file wherever you want but apart from that then it's just this screen so you want to put for this field you want to have between two to four gigs of RAM for your system and the rest can be dedicated to the VM so I have 12 gigs so I find 8 gigs is ideal because I don't find many games or anything that I do in Windows uses more than 8 gigs and also it gives me 4 gigs free for other things on Linux which is perfectly fine because all I really do on Linux is web browse, email, etc, etc and for cores you want to, for CPUs you want to set all 8 and that sounds weird at first but it's not giving it all the CPU cores like passing them directly over it's just allowing it to use all the cycles available in all the cores so unless you're doing something on Windows that's actually using all of these logical CPUs you're not going to be hurt by any performance uh, issues so yes uh, we'll get call it Win 10 yes we'll customize configuration before install that is really important and here's why so you'll want to go here uh, you can name it whatever you want chipset you can choose either Q35 or I44FX I personally would use I44FX because Q35 always crashes for me although Q35 in theory and documentation is a lot faster than I44FX so your mileage might may vary if you're doing this on a laptop like I am you're probably better off with this chipset and firmware there is that NVRAM thing we're talking about it has an entry here that normally wouldn't be there for UEF UEFI x86-64 so you want to hit apply and we want to go through CPUs make sure that's all set and it's for configuration you want to change model from host to model to host pass-through so it can all the programs direct the C uh, directly interact with the CPU as if they're on bare metal instead of going through a translation layer which can degrade performance topology you'll want to modify because for some reason the uh, topology that I can detect sometimes is weird so for example I'm using an i7 3720QM now this is a CPU with one socket four cores as it is a four core processor a 45 watt I believe and two threads so why you would put four cores and two threads is threads you wouldn't put to eight because it'll assume that each core has eight threads Whereas if you put two, it assumes each core has two threads, so therefore totaling eight cores. Super important to know that when you edit your topology, uh, sometimes your current allocation will change. You want to change that back up to eight. So go into memory, make sure that's okay. For your disk, you'll want to set it to vert IO. You'll want to download the vert IO, the vert IO ISO. Uh, install that while you're installing Windows and then you'll have much faster storage than if you use the traditional SATA translation layer and so 
Let's scroll down the list. Uh, you can pass through an actual network card here if you want. I don't do that because I just I use the Wi-Fi card on my laptop, so I just leave it as this. Uh, you can remove this if you're using an actual mouse like I do. So I'm going to remove hardware. Uh, for display spice, that's up to you personally. If you're going to be using like QXL or you're going to be using Looking Glass, keep spice on. Uh, otherwise, you can really just get rid of it. There's no point of it being there. So I'll do that because everything I'm doing is going to be controlled on my one monitor. Sound, you can keep the same unless you need to change it for legacy reasons or whatever. Video QXL, uh, if you're not going to be using that, if you're going to be passing it through directly to a monitor, don't bother with QXL. If you have like a keyboard and mouse and all that, they're going to be combining. Just hit none. And onto the fun part. Got to add hardware. PCI host device. And what is this? Our NVIDIA card show up. And what happens when we add our NVIDIA card? Uh, with that apparently, but also they show up there. So you want to do this for both your HDMI audio and the actual card itself, or else you're not going to... There's a chance it might not work, but there's also a chance you just won't have audio or you won't have video. That's just not fun. Uh, what I'm going to do for this, uh, just to show it off with the video, is I'm going to pass through my mouse. I don't have my keyboard set up because my room's kind of a mess. I've been watching uh, Marie Kondo's show, and I've made my room a complete mess instead, so that's kind of awkward. So I'm going to pass through certain things. I'm going to pass through my portable hard drive. I'm going to pass through my Max. It says Maxter Optical Gaming Mouse, which sucks because it has a much better name than that. And the much better name is my cool ass pink Diva Mouse. Uh, and my Xbox One controller, and that's all I really need to pass through, I think. So. You want to hit begin installation, but before you do that, here's where we go back into the verse patcher thing. So, begin installation, it'll start creating domain. But once it does, you want to immediately hit force off. Now, that sounds weird, but you want to do that so that the uh, the virtual uh, file configuration is made, the virtual manager. The virtual machine configuration, sorry about that, don't know why I'm tripping over my words so much, is already made, and once you recreate the domain, it makes it, and then you can go to, just go to your terminal, sudo, first patcher, dash dash error 43, dash dash vendor, dash id, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8b, win 10. Win 10 being your virtual machine name. And there we go, domain win 10 XML configuration edited. If you get that, you're golden. And now for the moment of truth, I will start actually turning on my phone camera so you can see that this is not bullshit, but in fact works just perfectly. Is, there we go. Where is my, and there we are. Uh, we're finally all initially booted. You can see, it's not main station, uh, win 10. Uh, my eGPU is back here somewhere. It's too dark to actually show it. But, there we are, Resident Evil 2. Uh, where are my controls? On? Oh, there we go. Now we're being registered. Story. Continue. I believe this should start me off in my save as Claire Redfield, because I finally got the Leon's campaign last night. This is a really, really fun game. Definitely worth checking out. Definitely, probably... Probably the re best Resident Evil since Code Veronica, I'd say, or Outbreak. Actually, Outbreak, I'd say. Because, to be fair, my brick was fucking awesome. There we are, and let's see, we'll look around. I really should have an FPS counter. I wonder if this game has one. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a keyboard plugged in, so if it doesn't, I'm just kind of SOL. Yeah, so that just does not seem to be the case here. But... This is gameplay coming from a GT730 on a laptop passed through to... What the hell? Ah, a friend. Anyway, like this is being played on a laptop with a mobile quad-core processor with an external graphics card hooked up to it in a virtual machine. I'd say I get anywhere playing here 
around no less than 50 at any point. I get like little micro stutters sometimes, but also that's mostly when I walk into new rooms and I'm playing off an external hard drive, so that probably has something to do with it. Here are the settings I have set for the game. Uh, mostly because the GT730 is not a great card. Even if I was playing on a desktop, I would have to play on similar settings.